I am Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. Each week we bring you information about exciting things that are happening in our community, and sometimes those things are just informative because you need to know. That's the kind of conversation we're going to have today around a very serious topic. The month of March is Brain Injury Awareness Month, and this is a great time to learn all about some things that we need to know as it relates to these challenges that are part of everyday living for many people. Diane Pearson is Northeast Alabama Resource Coordinator for the Alabama Head Injury Foundation. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, I'm very excited to be here today. Well, listen, we've talked about this conversation and I really wanted to have it because a lot of times we hear lots of stuff about diabetes prevention. We hear a lot of things about the many different kinds of cancers. Mm -hmm. We hear lots of stuff about medical challenges and conditions that people face. Right. Depending on your perspective, you may or may not hear a lot about brain injuries, but mm -hmm. I think that there's some, some really interesting nuances about brain injuries that more people need to know about because the potential not only exists for someone to have such an injury, but also many people around us have sustained these kinds of injuries. Right. So tell us a little something, first of all, about why we need a month to kind of emphasize this kind of awareness. Well, like you were saying, there's so many types of brain injuries and how they show themselves. And, you know, we think of brain injury, sometimes we think of this horrible car accident or someone has fallen off the roof or fallen off of a scaffolding or something like that. And a lot of times with those people, they may have very serious injuries. They may not be able to walk again. They may not be able to talk again. Um, but really, there are so many other people out there that by looking at them and watching them, you would never, ever know that they had a head injury. Mm. And that's one of the things that we want to bring to light in the month of March is that it's not... It's, you know, it's still about the people that are injured severely, and there's a whole spectrum of what we see. But I had posted something on Facebook the other day about, you know, if somebody is having trouble in the grocery line and you don't know them, please don't judge them mm. because they could be struggling with how to count money mm. or how to interact with the cashier mm -hmm. or things like that. So that's just something that this month is really great about is that we are putting it out there for everybody and all kinds of patients and consumers. Yeah. You know, the brain is such a remarkable organ and such an important part of our bodies, responsible for just about everything that happens mm -hmm. between the brain and the spinal column, that central nervous system connection. Right. Um, there can be organic problems mm -hmm. that occur that mm -hmm. cause people to have brain injuries. Mm -hmm. There can be accidents that occur. You mentioned mm -hmm. falling off a roof. I remember mm -hmm. it's been a little more than 10 years and now I actually fell off of a roof. Mm. And um, it was a, a, a incredible experience because as I was falling, I knew I could do nothing to stop my fall. Right. And I also knew that there was, con there was a concrete slab under me. Mm -hmm. Now the way I fell, I actually, f there was a flower pot, large flower pot in the back that had some soil, it didn't have a mm -hmm. plant in it. Mm -hmm. When I got up, I was so shaken up, I was stunned at first. I right. wasn't in a lot of pain, mm -hmm. but I felt something on the back of my head and I felt like I was gonna find just a really bad situation. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be dirt. And it was that soil that had been in the pot. Yeah. So whatever angle I hit the ground, I hit the pot, you know, it kind of broke something about the process, mm -hmm. but, but I got away from it with nothing more than a broken shoulder. Ooh which the doctor said it's one of the hardest shoulder uh, bones to break, mm. uh, things to break. And um, I was very grateful for that. But it made me think about the difference between the position I fell, the mm -hmm. angle I fell at, mm -hmm. the, the timing of the fall, and how quickly a person's life can change Absolutely. as a consequence of that. Mm -hmm. So should we not be more sensitive to, as you said, those kinds of challenges that people face in life. Absolutely, you know, like there are, and it's not just, it's speech, they call it executive functions, where 
you cannot m communicate and understand well enough to do something fairly simple. I'm working with a couple of consumers right now who I'm taking them through the social security admit abilities, processes, whatever, because they can't fill out the form. Mm. Mm. So my job is to sit with them and assist them in making sure that they have their forms filled out correctly and that we make an appointment together. I go as an advocate to sit down with the social security person and make sure that this person gets what they need mm -hmm. and that, you know, because so many times they can't convey what they really need. Right. What, what are the primary services that your organization offers people? Well, the Alabama Head Injury Foundation is a nonprofit, and we have resource coordinators all over the state of Alabama. I happen to cover Northeast Alabama, Madison, Jackson, DeKalb, and Marshall Counties. And our focus, and like you said, we need to let people know that there really is something out there that can help them. And that's kind of what a resource coordinator does. We reach out to communities, to hospitals, to everywhere we can mm -hmm. to find those people that have had injuries and don't know what to do mm -hmm. and don't know where to go. Uh, talk Whether it's the person or family member? Person, family member. Yeah. Sometimes we hear from um, Alabama Department of Rehab Services. Mm -hmm. I work with them. Mm -hmm. We work together on making sure that people get what they need. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Children's Rehab Services. Mm -hmm. I work with them to assist them in getting what their family needs. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a ramp to get in the house. Uh, maybe it is... Uh, a wheelchair. I've been looking for a wheelchair for two months for a gentleman all over the state. Mm. <laughs> so mm. that's one of the things we do. We find what people need and we assist them as an advocate and as somebody who understands maybe what they're going through and assist them, their family, their community, their physicians, their hospitals, every, every place that we can reach out to and help them to understand. It you know, everybody has this question about, you know, if you got on an elevator and you had to give the elevator speech to somebody about what you right. do and why it's important, what would you say? I'm going to give you a little bit more time than what an elevator speech might be, <laughs> but <laughs> thinking about what you're saying, I can only imagine that in the course of doing what you do, you mm -hmm. come across a lot of myths, mm -hmm. you come a lot of, ac across a lot of misunderstanding mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, misinformation. Right. about head injuries. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about maybe some of those kinds of things that, that you hear or experience that can mm -hmm. actually help people in understanding what the nature of this challenge is? I think one of the things that always comes to mind is that um, there's so much education out there and people don't, people don't know that. That's, and the information that they do hear is about only maybe distracted driving. Um, that's one of the things that we're really working on right now. Mm. I'm going to try to work with Huntsville Police Department so that we can work together and I can, you know, help them work on reaching out to people that may have brain injuries. Mm -hmm. um, it's such an education process mm. and some of the things that people, like you said, the misinformation. Um, and one of those things is that you can bump your head and receive a concussion, which is considered a brain injury. Mm. You know, my big thing, I love football. I love high school sports. Um, I want to reach out to the coaches here in town. We have such great high school football. Um, I want everybody to understand that they need a helmet that fits right. Mm. And that we all need to wear our bike helmets, even if they look kind of goofy. <laughs> <laughs> we need to wear our bike helmets when we're riding our bike. And... People who ride motorcycles, God love them. That is, that is just a safety thing waiting to happen when they don't wear their helmet. Mm, mm. And I know some states have laws for that. Um, but there's just, you know, I'm talking to a group of three and four-year-olds on Friday. And I'm so excited because I'm teaching them about head injuries and how banging your head can cause you to become confused and frustrated. Mm. And children never hear about these things. Mm. They may have heard of a parent's friend or uh, a family member or something like that that's got all these problems. But for kids, when they fall or when they get a uh, traumatic brain injury, they still have to go to school. 
and they have to have people there in those schools or people that can reach out to those schools to help them adjust because mm. they will become frustrated and confused and it could be a stigma where maybe other kids make fun of them because they can't do something or other sure. or they can't uh, add two plus six mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they just get confused and anxious. Yeah. There are a lot of mental health issues that go along with traumatic brain injuries. We see a lot of depression um, just because people aren't like they used to be, mm -hmm. um, family issues, because mm -hmm. um, they may not understand. We see a lot of behavioral problems mm -hmm. with traumatic brain injuries mm -hmm. where people uh, might lash out, mm -hmm. um, speak out that might not be very nice, mm -hmm. um, cuss somebody out that they love. Mm -hmm. um, so those types of things we have to reach out and make sure that people know that that's part of it. Yeah. They're not being nasty to you. They're not wanting to get out of the family, though they may say they might. We just need to make sure that people understand that, and maybe that will help them deal with the issues, whether mental health, whether family issues, or other things like that. So right. it's real interesting to me. I'm an educator at heart, so mm -hmm. it's real. It's uh, I love being out and being able to do this. Sure, yeah, and it's such important work, mm -hmm. especially... Uh, doing the month of March as right. we have it now that people can actually focus on getting more awareness, mm -hmm. more education. You know, we oftentimes think about the brain, I think, as a remarkable organ. Uh, we think about it encased in a skull mm -hmm. that, and then we kind of think about it, I think, most people do, in, in a sense that it's fairly protected right. because it's, it's there. It's, mm -hmm. you know, but the reality is that our brain is vulnerable to so many different mm -hmm. kinds of things. You know, you slip and fall on the ice and bang your head. Oh, yeah. You can um, have a car accident. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have uh, some kind of an accident where you, you know, fall or may fall back. You mm -hmm. know, kids, of course, are very active and engaged and energetic. And right. they're constantly exposing themselves to the mm -hmm. risk of some kind of an injury. You mentioned football, more and more children mm -hmm. playing football. There have been incredible stories about the results yes. of the sustained contact mm -hmm. uh, that occurs, mm -hmm. whether it's helmet to helmet or just over the years of grinding. And they're, they're all kind of very basic things that we experience every day that actually put our brains at risk. Mm -hmm. And we have to be more aware of that. I also think about our veterans that are returning from oh, Iraq and, and Afghanistan. Absolutely. Lots of traumatic brain injuries there. Mm -hmm. And as a society, we have to have not just compassion and empathy, mm -hmm. but we have to have understanding. Mm -hmm. Because as they try to reintegrate into a society mm -hmm. with these kinds of injuries that, you know, years ago they would have died from had right. it not been for the medical advance of today, uh, we have to find ways to um, integrate mm -hmm. individuals who are coming back from not just the physical trauma right. of the experience, but the emotional trauma of the experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are just some things that everybody, again, needs to be aware of. Right, right. And one of the things that um, I really want to do, and I'm hoping that I'm able to get support from them, is reaching out to the veterans programs. Um, you know, I've had family in the military that have been to war, um, but now we see with the IEDs and all of these horrible, horrible weapons, these people are coming back with part of their brain missing sometimes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of times we see traumatic brain injury associated and included with PTSD. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting two things on top of each other that are bad and That's nasty on their own, <laughs> right? right. Yeah. Uh, but now we're putting them together. Mm. And, you know, people that have both have a lot of difficulty just in the general population, mm. just being able to, I guess, beha behave in the societal norm. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they may not be able to do that. So we have to reteach, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of things. So, yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that I can really contact our veterans agencies and our veterans groups in town because it is so important for us to understand that we need to take care of them. They're our veterans. Right. You know, they've given part of themselves for us. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, that's that's one of the things that I'm looking really forward to being able to work with our veterans. Sure, and I mean, one of the places that you began was the idea that we are a very resourceful community. Mm -hmm. uh, your agency exists to make people more aware, to mm -hmm. perhaps find gaps in the community that we can close and bring people uh, this kind of services and uh, activities that they need to be engaged mm -hmm. in. Um, as we wrap up the show, I want to make sure that you give people a chance to know how they can contact you, uh, not just in this month when we're focusing on uh, brain injury, but mm -hmm. also throughout the year, because this is a 365-day experience, yes. 24 hours a day. And whether you are a family member, a person suffering from a brain injury, mm -hmm. a caregiver, mm -hmm. um, a provider, mm -hmm. you know, the whole society has a stake in this process of yes, sir. caring for people mm -hmm. who have brain injury. So how can people Absolutely. get in touch with you? Well, you can go to our website, ahif.org. Um, that is our main office. We're based out of Hoover. And once you contact them, depending on where you live, they will contact one of us, one of the resource coordinators, and give us your information, and we will reach out to you, whether it's by phone, I go out, visit people at their homes. I'll visit them. I met one girl in the library. You know, I'll visit you anywhere that you're comfortable with mm -hmm. so that we can sit down and look, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. And the great thing, too, is the ability to bring these people and their families in because we have support groups. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. We all come together. We have a good time. We talk about stuff that might be bothering us. Um, we have different age support groups so that everybody can be involved, no matter if you're a kid or if you're an older adult or anything like that. So it all comes together, and it's really important that people know that that's there and we can make those referrals and, and say, hey, I know somebody that can help you. Diane Pearson is Northeast Alabama Resource Coordinator for the Alabama Head Injury Foundation. Thank you for coming on and sharing with us all this great information today. Thank you so much, Kenny. I really appreciate you having me. All right. We hope that you've enjoyed the conversation, that you've taken great notes because there's a lot to learn. And uh, there are also just so many different resources out there that we don't have to suffer in silence. Uh, we can be a friend to someone. We can be an advocate for another person. Or we can just be more informed about those issues and challenges that are part of our society today. We hope that you'll like our Facebook page, which is Impact with Kenny Anderson, where you can see a video of the show that you just watched, as well as some behind the scenes shots of what happens when the camera stops rolling. For Impact with Kenny Anderson, I hope that you have a great day.